Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check this out. Celsius is getting a class action lawsuit. You won't believe from who. XRP pegged to a high value as a stable coin. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Dig Perspectives at the top of the screen. Everything that we're talking about here today, it is $947 billion. Yeah, that's what we're looking at for a market cap under a trillion, 3.6 off right now for the 24 hour. It is June 15th, 2022. Good afternoon, everybody. Bitcoin, 21,300 plus. Ethereum, 1,100 plus right now. Cardano is 47 cents and XRP is 31 cents. The range of price right now is between 30 and 32 cents, almost 33 cents. We'll keep an eye on it. This is what's going on in the general economy here. Jerome Powell says the Federal Reserve will deliver its largest rate hike in 28 years to tackle scorching inflation, a move that should push the U.S. dollar to a fresh high against its major currency rivals. It says the Federal uh, rate hike by 75 basis points right there. So three quarters of a percent is how I get that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Glint. And I don't even think after telling you what that last piece of news was is why I'm buying gold. <laughs> There's trouble coming, ladies and gentlemen. And Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen and the rest of them tried to tell us it was all transitory, which means temporary. It won't last long. Well, it's lasting a lot longer than anybody thought. And I still believe the heart of the problem has not come home to roost yet. And that's why I'm buying gold with Glint Pay. I love working with them, and I love being a customer. Make sure you check the link out underneath the description. You can buy gold for yourself as well. Looking right here, 85 million XRP transferred from FTX to unknown wallet. Let me provide a little clarity here. It was not my wallet. <laughs> I always chalk this up to on-demand liquidity. Who else has got it? I know XRP does. And I tell you, I think at some point you are going to see the price match the actual volume of on-demand liquidity for which I believe it is not doing currently. This is a great piece here. I'm not going to read the whole piece to you from Charles Gasparino. If crypto follows the dot-com trajectory, be prepared for a long, grueling ride. And by that, I could say I've already been in for a long, grueling ride since 2017. Look at a stock chart from Amazon back in the dot-com era and how it nearly hit penny stock levels. I wonder if the millennials and Genzers have the stomach for what's coming. You know, no matter who you are, there are going to be these moments where you are tried by your investments and what is going to survive and what isn't. I have already seen some winners and I have damn sure seen some losers. But I tell you, I really am excited about the long-term play for XRP and XLM. And no, that is not financial advice. It is my digital perspectives on my personal research. And I'm encouraging you to do your own research because this is the kind of moment we're going through. I think this analogy is perfect that Charles has used, used here. And we have to ask ourselves, you know, where are our bets? Where did we place our money? I'm doing the best job I can to stack my penny next to their dollars. They're being the ones that are in this space paying to build it out. The ones that have the deep partnerships involved that I believe have an opportunity to survive this moment, this watershed moment that lies before us just before the precipice of crypto legislation, starting with stable coins, comes into play. Speaking of which, SEC Chief Gary Gensler repeated his warning to investors about lending platforms promising high interest rates on crypto products because of Celsius. Well, we have some news on that front. 
Crypto lender Celsius, which froze all withdrawals from its platform on Sunday, has now hired a restructuring lawyers to advise on its current predicament, which is a huge problem. And we've seen Nexo offer to buy the uh, good assets off of that platform up until now. But now there's more breaking news here. BitBoy, Ben Armstrong, says today they begin the process of bringing a class action lawsuit against Celsius Network and Alex Mashinsky personally. Apparently. More details in the coming days. Now, I tell you, I don't know the details on this, but I am guessing from his fervor here that he and probably a lot of his his audience are using and probably in the middle of the throes of what is going on on Celsius right now. SEC Chairman Gensler is not happy about the new crypto legislation bill. Listen, I'm not so sure about this one, and I brought this up specifically to cover it. Because in this, it says that he's not happy about the crypto legislation bill, but I don't think that that's the case. It says here that Gensler intends to further discuss his concerns about the bill with lawmakers. He's already reiterated his concerns about cryptocurrency exchanges listing unregistered securities, which we all know. The Gillibrand Loomis bill, which was introduced in early June, would classify the lion's share of cryptocurrencies as commodities. That is partially true. If you're talking about market cap, then the answer is yes, because Bitcoin and Ethereum hold right around 50% or north of 50% of the crypto market cap, normally, generally speaking. So if you're speaking in terms of market cap, then the answer is yes. But if you're speaking in the numbers, the sheer numbers of tokens in this space, it couldn't be further from the truth. And I want people to really understand that that delineation between those two points, because I don't believe this article actually, and I'm not taking a shot at Alex uh, Dobnia here. He does great work, but I don't think it's as clear as it needs to be because I don't believe Gary Gensler feels that way. If you look at that bill, it takes Ethereum and Bitcoin out of his hands and puts the rest of the crypto space at the SEC's doorstep. There's no question about that. No one will argue that if they looked at that bill. Now, take a look here. Reserve Bank of India Deputy Governor confirms 2023 launch for the CBDC for the Reserve Bank of India, which is the largest remittance country in the world, if my memory serves me correctly, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there was a point I wanted to make about this, and it was to remind everybody of this. Let me show you. We're going to talk about this. Walled Gardens, right here. Remember when David Schwartz told us about walled gardens? Well, that's exactly what central bank digital currencies are. They are the digital version of the paper problem with paper money. And once everyone, 90% of central banks are developing and in some form of phase of developing and launching a central bank digital currency, which will in fact create a walled garden. And as David Schwartz has said in the past, and once those banks get comfortable, they can push the button to lower the walls of that garden and use something like a bridge asset of XRP to be able to be, make these transactions more, less, with less friction, right? Because XRP can act as the grease or the oil for the new financial system and the new financial payment system making it very easy. But but here's the thing. Let's look at this. I myself personally don't believe that Tether is going to be used in the new financial system. And if it is, there's going to be a great structural change about it for it to do so. So what is this walled garden it is the central bank digital currencies it could even be usdc being used because i believe it's highly regulated to be used but the, the the point i'm making here is that there are problems all around the world we're seeing 90 percent of central banks develop these these assets central bank digital currencies and it doesn't solve the problem of friction but at this point and in this current snapshot 
of where XRP is at 30, 31 cents doesn't solve the problem either. Because I personally believe that banks already hold an option contract on XRP. And if they agree to update and do the things they're supposed to, they will be awarded, probably based on some formula that I am not smart enough to understand, based on their volume, projected volume, and things of that nature. And they will be awarded that at some point once it is clear that they will use it. Now, when that moment is, I don't pretend to know. But I do believe that that moment is coming because it's really understanding that we've heard the IMF, the World Economic Forum, and other entities talk about moving from a debt-based system to a multipolar asset-backed system very quickly. I don't want to get long-winded here, but meaning using multiple forms of collateral to provide the value, right? That's what we're talking about instead of a debt-based system, which we're currently in. You pony up the money, there's real value there. You don't go up above a certain margin, probably 70%, 75% of that value. So there's always a float back in to protect and insulate. So it's never, ever less than it's supposed to be. Now, with that being said, that's how I believe ultimately XRP will get used as a bridge currency because I believe that the many different banks developing these things can back their reserves for their central bank digital currencies by gold and, and cash itself and many, many other assets to be multiple assets to back their CBDC. And then in doing so, they agree to put that CBDC on the back of an XRP and use it as a bridge to bank B that they would be dealing with in C, D, and E and all those banks, right? And this would be a way of driving value onto a new payment highway, a new value protocol at a floor price for the asset that would be, by the way, in my eyes and understanding, a very high price pegged to uh, XRP or price set or a price floor, however you want it, providing a stable value for the token to be used as a bridge. Because I don't believe central banks want to use a token that is 29 cents yesterday and 32 cents tomorrow. Now, some say, well, that's not a very wide spread, and it only takes them three to five seconds to settle. You're absolutely right, and they could still use it, and it'd be better than SWIFT. But we're missing a component. They want to hold the money, too. They don't want to just use it in a pool. Look, if we're going to redo a new system, why not have a new money? And new money can't just be conflated like we all just chipped in and decided to make XRP $500. That isn't the way real value works. Real value works by bringing real collateral like gold and reserve cash onto a new value protocol, which is a new highway for payments. And you combine that liquidity, that collateral with the utility of the network, and you get a very real price for a very new money. But it must be stable because if not, why wouldn't I just use something like gold or oil or some other asset that floats up and down in value? Because you haven't really solved the problem and it's not money unless everybody agrees that it's money. Even Gary Gensler agrees that a bridge currency like Ripple XRP should be stable. Listen to him say it. Um, but to go between Tanzania and Nigeria... You need, you need somebody to bear some counterparty risk that the ledgers both move and are adjusted at the same time. And usually it's a bank that is in both countries. You could use blockchain, but you, the current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between. And that bridge could be a stable value that's, that's you know, backed by the U.S. dollar or the euro. It could be a currency even like uh, Ripple has an alternative. It's just piloted in May, so it's, it's not yet up in any enterprise-wide level. You could use blockchain, but you, the current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between, and that bridge could be a stable value 
bridge currency in between. And that bridge could be a stable value. The current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between. And that bridge could be a stable value. You could use blockchain, but you, the current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between. And that bridge could be a stable value that's, that's you know, backed by the U.S. dollar or the euro. It could be a currency even like uh, Ripple has an alternative. It's just piloted in May, so it's, it's not yet up in any enterprise-wide level. But I believe because that was 2018, that was correct. But to this day in 2022... I do not believe that that is correct. I believe they absolutely have the partnerships and the customers to be able to pull that off and be able to provide the kind of collateral to be able to handle much larger payment flows than they currently do today. But in order to do so, they're going to have to know when something is a note, right? Now, I also believe that is exactly why we heard Senator Gillibrand say this over the weekend. We could do a stable coin bow between now and the end of the year. Senator Pat Toomey, Senator Gillibrand, Senator Loomis, Patrick McHenry. They're all agreement, agreement on that. They're in alignment on that. They even told us that Gary Gensler agrees that Ethereum is a commodity just like Bitcoin. That's what they said. So when I look at that stuff, then I think about this with the uh, Christine Lagarde here, where she talked about the whole idea of we had to pump so money, print so much money and pump so much money back into the economy because of the pandemic. Listen. Four months into my job to significantly increase the size of the balance sheet because that's all we had. Otherwise, the economy would have collapsed and it would have been even accelerated by a financial crisis. You had to do it. It was so, the COVID crisis. You say that's yes. what we needed to do. But how do you get it? It will back? come. It will come. In due course. Yeah. How? <laughs> In due how? course, it will come. Yeah. In due course, it will come. She doesn't give the answer. That is not sufficient. But maybe this is. If the size of your debt problem is so big that it can't be paid off, and in fact, even inflation, which is the usual way you would seek to default on your debt slowly over time, you can't get enough inflation generated, then there is one further option. And that is you literally abandon the entire system of money and accounting. And I know- and that is not the first time that would have happened in history from economist Pipa Malmgren right there. And don't forget, We have an executive order that is still out from March 9th, April, May, June. How much longer is it going to be out? If we're going to get legislation by the end of the year, the way Gillibrand says, I bet this this executive order should be ringing in any time this month to July. Three to four months, have the people come back from the agencies, start to form some opinions and get on out the door. I'll tell you this. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if I'm wrong. I believe that I understand some potential outcomes here, whether they go one way or another, right door or the left door. And I believe at the end of the day, whatever they do, they will not ruin the full scale and use case for XRP or XLM, because I believe they will be the highways for the new financial system that will be highly regulated. And at 51 years old, that is appealing to me. <laughs> Let's take a look at this before I get out of here. Eggrag Crypto says here, we may be in a larger Elliott wave correction here. Looking here from uh, wave one possibility to wave two and maybe a correction trying to get back on track for three, which would put us at a $68 uh, XRP, according to his chart here by June 2025. And then we'll pull back here to 2028 if the Elliott wave is correct at $3.50, round the old all time high. And then ultimately 2032, you could see over a fourth thousand five hundred dollar xrp now we all know what the price of xrp is today but i think we all also understand the ones that really understand and i know most of you do we have not truly seen the real use case of xrp really really be put to work we know that 25 percent of the volume of transactions are on-demand liquidity and that's phenomenal because that tells me no matter what happens to the retail market you have use case xrp can grow 
But I firmly believe because of the situation we've been put in from the global liquidity crisis to a deliberate shutdown of the economy for the pandemic, we in this moment need a solution. And I truly believe since I've known about this asset that XRP can serve as a bridge bridge currency for that solution and the velocity of money to reignite the entire global economy. That's going to do it for me, not financial advice for me or anyone else. That's where I'm at on this day. Check out all the links underneath the video, the products and services I use each and every day. I'll catch all of you on the next one.